Hello. Today's video discusses how flying monkeys try to silence the victims of narcissistic abuse. Since I have quite a bit of information on this topic, this video will be made in two parts. The second part will air next week. Not only do narcissists want to silence their victims, but their flying monkeys want to do so as well. Whatever their narcissist wants is what the flying monkeys want after all. Flying monkeys use many of the same tactics narcissists use to silence their victims. Personally, I believe that is because many of them are also narcissists and especially covert ones. I say this because it's obvious that they gain something from being flying monkeys. If they weren't gaining anything, they wouldn't be so willing to be flying monkeys. I think that's something they gain is narcissistic supply. Often they get to look like a good person just trying to help, which is something that is extremely attractive to covert narcissists. They're also very manipulative, which of course describes all narcissists. If they can get you to do what they want, they're also obviously thrilled about that, and I think that's because that's narcissistic supply. Anytime a narcissist can control another person, it makes them feel powerful, which provides narcissistic supply. One of the most common things flying monkeys do to silence their victims is to invalidate them. They have complete disregard for the victim's pain and have no trouble letting victims know that frequently. Invalidation quickly shuts a person down. A frequently invalidated person feels like no one would want to hear anything they have to say because they're wrong or stupid or crazy. Another thing flying monkeys do is shame their victims. They do their best to make victims feel ashamed of themselves for being upset that the narcissist abused them. They remain the victim, I'm sorry, they remind the victim that this is the only set of parents they'll ever have or that their parents are elderly and won't be around much longer. If the victim is married to the narcissist, then it's God hates divorce, love covers a multitude of sins, and all couples have their problems. If the victim has already gone into contact with the narcissist in their life, there will be a lot of shaming for that too. Flying monkeys may say things like, after all that person did for you, I don't know how you could treat her that way. Or that kind of behavior isn't honoring your mother and father. If you're a Christian like you claim to be, you would... whatever. If they can make you feel enough shame, You'll suffer in silence, not confronting the narcissist or discussing the abuse that that person's put you through with anyone. Flying monkeys are also very good at gaslighting. They will let you know that they don't believe you. They'll tell you that things couldn't have happened that way or they didn't happen at all because your abuser is just too nice. They accuse you of lying or at the very least exaggerating. Anyone who, <coughs> excuse me, who they can make doubt themselves certainly isn't going to confront the narcissist or reveal the abuse. Why would they if they're unsure of what really happened? Triangulation is another tool flying monkeys love to use. They will recruit the services of other flying monkeys to gang up on you. If you stop speaking to one flying monkey, then chances are excellent another one will come in contact with you and have the same message as the original one. The goal is to have as many people as possible give you the same message that you will bend to their will. This can be very effective. When you have a bunch of people who are extremely convinced that what they're saying is correct, it's pretty hard not to give in and think they are correct. Ganging up on a person definitely can shut down a victim very easily. Thank you for watching. Part 2 will air next week, and I'll see you then.